Ken Smith with Ken Smith Gallery and if you've been following me you know that I've been driving this uh, up and down the area that I live in Tennessee Virginia uh, later on I'm hoping to have the car in Michigan Illinois Indiana Ohio Kentucky Pennsylvania later this year and a lot of people have asked me how do you navigate? How do you get around? How do you find where you're going when you're taking back roads? How are you keeping things charged like your cell phone or running a GPS? And the truth of the matter is, this is a 92 year old car, six volt positive ground. And while I have an alternator in here, it's still six volt positive ground. I've tried to keep the, the internals, if you will, of the cars as, as original as possible and yet still feel comfortable to be able to drive this car 200, 225, maybe even 250 miles in the course of a day. Obviously taking back roads. But taking back roads presents a, a, a very unique an unusual problem especially if I'm traveling by myself and so I thought I'd share with with you how I kind of circumnavigate from point A to point B eventually to point C point D probably the first important tool to take with you is a is a road atlas and I think uh, road atlas or maps are great they provide a lot of basic information for you the big drawback to a, to a road atlas, if you will, or a map, is that you just can't do two things at one time. And if you're the only person traveling, you're constantly pulling over and kind of looking where you're going, especially when it comes to taking back roads, because a lot of your turns are maybe every 10 or 15, 20 miles. And that really makes for an extremely long day when you're traveling at, say, 45 miles an hour uh, and realizing that you already have to stop about every 100 to 125 miles to get fuel. You need to get out, you need to stretch your legs. Driving a car like this is a lot more work than driving your modern car. And so, while an atlas is essential to take, I can't rely on just the atlas. And some folks will ask me, well, using your phone for a GPS, uh, that can work. And yes, it can work and um, I've done it but unfortunately you need cell phone service and that is uh, a major drawback especially when you're taking a lot of back roads uh, in Virginia Tennessee West Virginia Ohio maybe the upper pin of Michigan uh, some desolate places perhaps in uh, North Carolina mountains, the Appalachian Mountains there, or Pennsylvania. So there's a lot of locations where you may not be able to get cell phone service. And to be honest, there are still people that have flip phones. That's not really all that unusual today. So while a phone is great to have, and absolutely an asset to have, I've been caught not having cell phone service and trying to circumnavigate. And it makes for a challenge. So the ideal situation is to have a GPS with you as well. Herein lies the problem with the GPS. Most GPSs are running on 12 volts. Now I've got six volt positive ground. Paul Shins uh, if you follow him and you're on his web, uh, his YouTube channel, he talks about putting in a, uh, a six volt positive ground socket that will power up most cell phones and keep them charged and run your GPS. And it works. I have that actually in the car. But I wanted a backup situation. What happens if I'm that socket fails what happens if fill in the blank and so what happens if for example you don't want to drill a hole in the floorboard like Paul shows 
I came up with an alternative to mount, but let's say you don't even want to do that. I have another option for you, and that's what I want to share with you, as well as how I make videos while I'm driving. Pretty simple. Let's first talk about the GPS. This is one of the GPS's that I use. And what I do is I use a power supply. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour power supply. You can buy just about at any big box store for around 20, 20, 25 bucks. You can find 20 amp milliamp hour supplies for about the same amount of money online or your smaller big box stores, if you will. But as you can see, it's powered up and it's totally functional. I can get my map going. I can get a longer cord. I just used a shorter cord for illustration, but I've literally had this sitting in the passenger pocket seat or pocket door, the door pocket with a long cord uh, and uh, it works just fine. 10,000 milliamp hours and I ran 225 miles in the course of about 12 hours with this thing constantly being on and I didn't use one half of the battery capacity. Got to the hotel that night, charged it up, I was ready to go the following day. So 10,000 milliamp hours will power this GPS unit without a problem. 20,000, oh and it, by the way it also kept my cell phone charged all day too. So if you have 20,000 you're good for probably two or three days if you were camping and didn't have electricity readily available for you to recharge this. This has two USB ports, most of them do, and it's a really solid uh, application for powering this up. Definitely an option for you. Some folks ask me about how I do videos while I'm driving, and truth be told, this is really kind of the device that I use. It simply sticks onto the windshield just like your GPS does. It has a movable gooseneck that you can point your cell phone however you want to. I generally kind of do it like this to get it out of the way of the wiper blade. Holds the cell phone just fine. If you're concerned about having both of these up in the windshield, and obviously the windshield in these is pretty small, and I get it, I've done this as well. I've actually taken my cell phone and with painter's tape, taped it right to the bottom portion of the windshield right here. And that's pretty much out of the way. I put it directly underneath my GPS and it's still hands-free operation essentially. And that does a really, really good job for me. Some folks have asked me, what do I do for making videos when I'm on the side of the road or when I'm photographing something. And this is the little culprit that I use. Obviously space is a premium in these cars. This fits really nice in the uh, door pocket. Holds your cell phone just fine. If you want to hold it vertically, turn this. If you want to hold it this way. I've actually wrapped this around the legs of my camera tripod so that I'm using my camera tripod and this at the same time. Uh, this can also be placed on the ground if you want to do a really low level drive by while you're creating your own home video. Great option and again you can get these at a big box store for under 20 bucks. Same with the uh, one I showed you earlier. So really small devices, and I just wanted to share that with you. You've got plenty of options if you don't want to be drilling holes or permanently mounting anything, just with what I've showed you. I hope it helps. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. It's really important to us, and it helps me to keep making videos for you. Thanks for watching.